Hello, Jinder Empathy. I don't know if you're the sort of guy who accepts responses if they don't agree with your responses, but I'm going to go ahead and make this response to your video commentary on Girl Rights What and being gender inclusive or what have you. Uh, I came across this through Eugene Pons U, so thanks Eugene, because he made a response to you as well. I don't know if he tried to post as a direct response you didn't accept. I don't know. Regardless, I will post a link to your video. With all due respect, uh, your video is pretty nebulous. You don't really talk very much about anything concrete. And if I were to summarize what you talked about and what you took a fair bit of time to, to basically arrive at as a conclusion was that <clears throat> in the words of the immortal Rodney King, uh, and I know you're English, but uh, Los Angeles riots, 1991, why can't we all just get along? Somebody along those lines, right? Why can't we all just get along? Why can't the MRE be more inclusive? You specifically talk about so-called moderate feminists. And there's a lot of ground to cover, I suppose. But let's first talk about Girl Rights Watt. Now, Girl Rights Watt is a bit of an icon. She uh, came to the fore uh, not even a year ago. And uh, she is more popular than all the most popular male MRAs uh, combined. And to those who think I resent that, I don't. I think it's good because we need someone who is popular, who people listen to. So just explaining her status. The other thing, and this is I, something that boggles my mind, uh, the fact that in, in a way you target girl rights, what about people? Perhaps because she is the only popular and I do mean popular in the sense that she appeals to both men and women, uh, MRA on YouTube, it, she's sort of our PR person. Uh, and I don't know if you're new to all of this or not, but she's our PR person. Uh, extreme people, well, you're listening to one, one allegedly extreme person, uh, and others, Barbarossa maybe, might be considered extreme, I don't really like any of these terms, but this is what others call us. <clears throat> We're not the PR people. She is the PR person. She's the one who has a lot of things going for her. A, she's a woman, so people listen to her automatically. B, she has very informative, intelligent content. So another thing going for her. And C, she has a nice kind of uh, neutral, well, neutral, friendly approach um, to making videos and people are receptive to that and that's good and we need that so I thought it was odd that you would target her of all people um, and of course like I said I uh, full disclosure I'm probably one of those people that you describe as being extreme that you don't mention directly but anyway girl rights what uh, you claim that she should be more gender inclusive. You also criticize her for citing the fact that moderate feminists offer cover to extremist or radical feminists. Now, I don't know if you've seen the video, but I highly recommend you do watch it by Girl Rights What? Called Me a Feminist? I don't think so. I believe that's what it's called. I'll be posting a link so you can watch it. It really answers all the questions you have. But if one were to summarize everything Girl Rights What has produced to date thus far, there is a kind of, uh, well, essential message that she has been repeatedly talking about. And that message is that we have been hoodwinked by our own evolution into both men and women, into believing that women are somehow oppressed, that they are suffering uh, constantly, and men are in a state of power and that she's produced many videos and different angles uh, alluding to this, but that is the core of her message, that evolution, we've evolved in a state of mind and being, that we perceive women as being um, suppressed, disadvantaged, so on and so forth, when the reality is quite the opposite. Uh, when it was men... Uh, 
being thrown on the pits of immolation, be it the uh, be it war or uh, backbreaking labor or what have you, I mean, throughout throughout history, that, that we've been hoodwinked by our own evolution, by our own perceptions, in particular by our own in particular by our own uh, subconscious perceptions, and. Uh, that is, in my opinion, the essence of what her message is. That all of her videos allude to this and, and highlight different aspects of this. She takes the time to dissect this, uh, offers rational arguments, and uh, cites evidence as well. And in the video, Mia Feminist, I don't think so, which I believe is the name of the video, she talks about why she's not a feminist and why she cannot uh, subscribe to anything uh, feminism advocates. And let me tell you why people in the MR, I, I certainly would never, but then again, I'm just a lowly male, uh, subscribe or tolerate any sort of feminist, moderate or otherwise, because feminism, just as Girl Rights What has talked about since, uh, since her inception on YouTube, is based on the false premise, yet the readily accessible subconscious drive and instinct and belief that women are somehow uh, underprivileged and in a constant state of uh, threat, under a constant state of uh, threat and uh, well, disadvantage, uh, so on and so forth. Pa pardon me, I'm quite tired. The problem with feminism then is it's a giant delusion. Politicized feminism, and I'm sure you, know, you probably don't know the stuff I've done, so politicized feminism and heron feminism, but I'll talk about feminism, politicized feminism, in my opinion, but feminism, it's based on a giant illusion, delusion, both. Uh, the idea that women have suffered more than men, that they're, they're oppressed, and so on and so forth, when throughout history the opposite has been true. Um, so, at the core, uh, that's the problem with feminism. Now, <clears throat> moderate feminists, as opposed to the so-called radicals, I don't really see any distinction there, but you know, perforce will not acknowledge that, because the, the, the doctrine, and this is a doctrine of feminism, is that, what inherent to the doctrine of feminism, is that feminism, or women, have been oppressed, that they've suffered unjustly, and that men have not, and that men have contributed to that oppression. <clears throat> and thank the gods for a woman, an individual like Girl Rights Watt, who, who does have mass appeal, who highlights the fact that this is all uh, bollocks, essentially, that we have been running on software for eons now that has basically tricked us into believing that, and that is where the feminists uh, started and, well, ended, is that they were tricked themselves by their own instincts and inclinations. <clears throat> so feminism, yes, feminism is a load of, uh, a heap of bullshit. So moder a moderate feminist might have, well, slightly different intentions than a radical feminist, but he or she is still uh, living uh, in a hoodwinked state of mind, a state of being. He or she doesn't get that we've been tricked by our own evolution. That's really the core, I, in my opinion, of what she has talked about. So in, in asking uh, <laughs> that the MRA uh, be more inclusive, and it's not clear exactly what you mean by that. And you're essentially asking that a herd of sheep be inclusive of a pack of wolves. That uh, <laughs> would, of course, not work out very well. Um, at some point in time, the wolves will get hungry. <clears throat> you see, feminists will never have the interests of men uh, at heart. This is because whether they genuinely believe it or not, it is a, uh, a doctrine, a, a dogma, which explicitly states that women are oppressed, suppressed, disadvantaged, under threat, 
and they need help and support all the time, and that men are uh, great wielders of power and that we're all uh, sitting at the top and enjoying the good life. When reality, upon a bit of examination, reveals rather readily uh, quite the opposite. How on earth do you wish to be inclusive of people that believe that? And then, and I'm part of my uh, part of my French, but I think it's folly on your part to believe that people who adhere to such a doctrine would then turn around and say, yes, but we support men's rights as well. After all, feminism is feminism, right? Female feminism for women's rights. Women's equality. Now, I don't want to make this video into a novel, and so I'm not going to talk about the concept of equality and how feminists uh, totally fudge uh, the idea of uh, equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity. I mean, they have no idea about that stuff. But um, it's very clear that feminist doctrine is not interested in the rights of men. Another important message that you should have garnered from Girl Rights What's videos is that misandry is inherent to our biology. We've evolved this way. Um, and Girl Rights What has gone so far as to say it's pretty much what we're stuck with. That means that it's very unlikely that feminists, moderate, radical, are going to acknowledge that misandry is a problem because misandry, the whole point of misandry is that it is viewed and has been viewed for millennia as unproblematic. Misogyny is generally speaking, though not always, a creation of fiction since women have been favored throughout history, favored with protection, provision, spared the ravages of war, violence that uh, was too often uh, enacted uh, against men and visited upon men. <coughs> women and uh, women are not, in contrast to what feminists claim, uh, in a, under a state of siege. They're not suffering. And in today's Western society, in your country, in my country of origin, the United States, and I've lived in your country for several years as well, <laughs> women are doing very well indeed, collecting massive alimony payments, enjoying uh, government, uh, government established job quotas, university quotas, even departmental quotas at certain uh, universities. They're doing very well indeed. Um, so. In order to address misandry, uh, these people would need to address the fact that misandry is inherent to our biology, that men, that we men too are mis misandric. Uh, we throw, we would and have done, uh, I mean, we as a collective have thrown our fellow men under, under a bus to save women, women and children first, and so on and so forth. Until feminists acknowledge any of that, uh, <laughs> there is no being inclusive of those people. They do not have the same interests that we have. They are not interested in advocating for those interests. And quite frankly, they don't even see the big picture. I mean, uh, feminists' uh, theory is uh, uh, cobbled together from a bunch of instincts, feelings, and really does not stand the test of reality. Any scrutiny really can uh, dismantle it. So I don't even know what a moderate feminist is. And, and I don't know if you misquoted Girl Rights What. And I have watched all our videos, though I don't remember everything she said. But I, I think in this reference that uh, she talks about moderate feminists, it's, she's, I think she uses the term coffee shop feminist to sort of describe a kind of woman who well, loosely calls herself that, but or vaguely calls herself that, but isn't really involved in the activism, I'm not sure. But just as you in your video 
seem perplexed that we, on the other side, have not grasped that uh, why can't we see this, you say? Why, why can't we see this? Well, the thing is, we, we do see this, and I will talk about this briefly, this issue of PR, but the point is that y you cannot uh, ally sheep with wolves. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, a wolf will never have the primary interests of a sheep, and I know that analogy is far from perfect, but I'm simply making use of it to uh, illustrate that feminists and MRAs, uh, despite ostensibly having similar goals, some sort of equality, uh, MRAs, generally speaking, are literally for equality. Uh, feminists are interested in supremacy. Yeah. I, whatever an MRA is, you know, at the end of the day we're a bunch of people making videos, so you want to call that an activist or not, it's up to you. But I mean, most men who are in the MRM, men rights movement, men's rights movement, they want to get rid of all the entitlements. Women and feminists want the entitlements. They, they think it's important. We don't want entitlements for men, women, minorities, anything, anyone. Women, feminists, want those entitlements. How is that, uh, how is that even a possibility then to, to, to inc be inclusive of people who want oppositional th things that are just in complete opposition to what we expressly desire? Now, you're welcome to call that an extremist view. Um, it's just not compatible, though, unfortunately, with what men's rights activists want is not compatible with what feminists want or state that they want. And feminists want, continually want more and more and more. Now it might be that some moderate feminists have called out some radical feminists, but until all feminists uh, grasp that the issue at hand is much larger and that we are fighting a war against our own inter uh, internal instincts and our biology and software that we've been stuck with. I mean, we, we, uh, I often say this, we're running on 20,000-year-old software. Uh, nothing is going to change. And no, we cannot be inclusive of those people. However, what I think you are addressing as well uh, is a bit of uh, public relations, right? Well, we have Girl Rights Watch. She is our public relations person. She's the only one of us who can reach out to other people. She's certainly, I mean, I have a few female subscribers, uh, uh, very few, but she's certainly the only one that has the kind of appeal that she has. Moreover, she's also the on only one that I could imagine appear on a talk show or a Jay Leno or something to that effect, and that's important. So we do have a public relations person. I can't speak for other people, but when I make my videos, my intention is not to create good public relations. After all, I don't have that many subscribers. Uh, and uh, what I do seek to do usually is A, to help people to the extent that I can, specifically men, and B, maybe to uh, bring up some ideas that uh, might lead to people uh, thinking about them. Food for thought, uh, basically. More than that, I cannot do. And it's not my job then, in my view, to create good public relations. You, you, and you certainly cannot c create good public relations by making concessions and betraying your own values and convictions. And I, I really urge you to watch that video by Girl Rights What, wherein she basically states that, that she, I'm paraphrasing it, that she cannot betray her own convictions and, and support something that is just a bunch of bunk, like feminism, uh, and say, well, let's make some concessions here and maybe we can all get along. Why can't we all get along? Because sometimes we can't. Um, feminism does not have the interests of men at heart, um, and it never will have the interests of men at heart. I mean, most women unfortunately, it might be news to you, don't have the interests of men at heart. So being more inclusive, well, I think that's not going to happen. And you can act perplexed and be astounded by that, but uh, you shouldn't be. Uh, you, you, 
I mean, quite frankly, you cannot win a war by fraternizing with uh, the enemy. And I, it was rather extreme terms, but then again, I'm an extremist. But no one, I think, in the MRA uh, really sees a great distinction between moderate feminism and uh, radical feminism. I mean, even, uh, you probably don't know this, the, in the great divide between the conservatives and traditionalists, and those of, uh, of my sort, more of the men going their own way, not even the other people think that there's a moderate on or versus a radical feminism. What you might be referring to are, what, coffee shop feminists? I don't know. But you don't make concessions to people who have oppositional and diametrically opposed interests. It's, it's ridiculous. And le unless you're trying to broker a peace treaty, is that what you're trying to do? Is that what you would like us to do? Are we to broker a peace treaty with people that do not wish well upon us? Um, and on a final note, I mean, I, I hate to burst, well, everyone's bubble, but let's be realistic. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're not going to be affecting very much change. We're just a bunch of people making videos on YouTube. Some of us have blogs, some of us don't. Uh, the person who has, uh, as I said, the greatest chance of expanding outside of this, out of, outside of the, the internet, the ether of the internet, that's Girl Rights Watt. And she is a, uh, I would say, for lack of a better expression, the perfect PR person. She's a woman, she's intelligent, uh, articulate, and she has a user-friendly approach. So I, like I said, find it very odd that you would uh, target her but like I said, and your video just doesn't talk about anything concrete. Being inclusive, it's, it's meaningless if inclusive means ha having the sheep invite over a party of wolves. It makes no sense. What's the point of that? Um, I mean, we, in a soci societally speaking, we're already being crushed under the heel of both inherent feminism and politicized feminism. Uh, as well as a state that uh, works hand in hand with politicized feminine and of course is the obedient slave child of inherent feminism. Uh, I just, it just boggles my mind that you think, why don't we see this? And all of these things, and I've answered some of these, uh, some of it here, uh, you, you claim that this has never been brought up before. It's never been asked. Uh, these questions have never been posed. And they have been posed and they've been answered. Uh, no one makes progress uh, on whatever they may or may not, well, whatever they want, wish choose to advocate by betraying uh, his, uh, his convictions. Um, I mean, It just makes no sense. It just it baffles me. It is if I were to say on my, my next video, hmm, yeah, but we probably should just get along, so uh, let's just say nice stuff about Harriet Truman. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if you could only see my expression, but you seem so puzzled by all of this. Have you missed out on what feminism is? What feminism is? The doctrine. And yes, the, the acolytes of feminism might be radical or moderate or less moderate or more radical or whatever, <laughs> but you have the doctrine. It's, it's a doctrine of female supremacy that seeks to uh, expand female privilege that has always been present to begin with. It, it's ludicrous. No, we're not going to be inclusive of people like that. And uh, I'm not going to, I'm never going to make accommodations to people like that. And on a final note, let me ask you if these so-called moderate feminists are moderate enough to say, yeah, let's get rid of rape shield laws, let's get rid of the job quotas, let's get rid of the educational quotas, let's get rid of maternity leave, state-enforced maternity leave, let's get rid of all of that stuff. Let's give men the option to opt out of unplanned and forced fatherhood. 
are the moderate feminists that you're speaking of going to say, yeah, let's do all of that? I highly, highly, highly doubt it. In summary, if you have convictions and you can adduce evidence to support those convictions, convictions, as nebulous as they might be, in the opposite camp are not going to mingle. Wolves and sheep. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching.